Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Well, in the last video, we took a look at the original cartridges that were available for the, for the TI-74 and TI-95. And I hinted at a new RAM and flash uh, cartridge set that are going to be available. And that's what this video is about. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So as a recap from the last video, the original cartridges uh, available were RAM, and different ROMs, uh, a few for each machine. And later on, there were some EEPROM and flash cartridges available that were mainly used by uh, places like insurance companies who give out the devices to their agents with software on there to calculate rates and that type of thing. The machine would have came with a blank cartridge like this. You notice there's no connector in here, uh, like you see there. And this would have slotted in here just to take up the space and keep you from dropping stuff in there. But what we're here to talk about is these guys. This is a RAM and flash cartridge that a friend and I came up with, mostly him. Uh, I did the case and helped out with this and that and collecting all the ROMs to burn to the flash carts. Um, the original ones were eight banks of 32K, either RAM or flash. Uh, the new ones available are 16 banks of 32k uh, with the ram we're using it was large enough to accomplish that already and we're using a large enough dip switch to accommodate that so we just switched to that but i wanted to show uh, these originals which only a few were made uh, on this video because there's some people that have those and this sort of video might help them if we open this up you can push the cartridge out there you can see the, see the set of dip switches on here, CR2032 battery, and I find it much easier um, on this because this cartridge is so small it took a lot to sh uh, shoehorn all these parts in here. Uh, I like uh, when I want to put a battery in I'll slide the whole board out just wiggle that a little to get it lined up there. And the carts have a different size slot on each side the connector does, so you can't put the board in upside down. And then negative side of the battery to the board like that. Put the battery in after it's already in there, it's much easier. And the new ones are the same case modeled after the original case, except instead of a, a top loading like we saw with the originals, this is kind of a, a breech loading case. Uh, we went with a piano style dip switch uh, so we could have an opening here in the end so you don't have to take the cover off to get to it. And these covers, if you put your fingernail there, put your thumb here, go like that, it pops right off. And this is the flash board here. See, so we've got our dip switch, flash right there on the bottom. That just slips in there. And then you can use a fancy tool like a paper clip or a really small screwdriver to reach in there and flip the dip switches. Uh, the manual describes which switch to flip for what. Uh, this is what that looks like. So um, there is a table that shows what the the letter labeled switches are for so for the flash you have a couple switches called pp that you flip one way if you're going to program the flash uh, with an external programmer flip the other way for running and on the ram cartridge there is a w which is a write protect so if you flip that down to the zero position uh, you can't write to the ram will act more like a rom in that case and notice that it does show you all over the place about which the switch is, which direction is on, which direction is off as far as the, the cartridge is concerned. And for the uh, original uh, eight bank flash cartridges, this is the settings with the dip switches and the order that they're on the board. 
And for the 16 bank, same thing. Uh, they're in a different order. So if you just look at the picture here, look at your switches on the board, it'll make a lot of sense. And there's some notes here about how to run this. Now on the TN95, you don't have a run command. It's keystroke program programmable. So you hit the run button, which is the space bar. We'll go through that briefly. I don't want to go into tremendous detail about how to operate each machine in this video. I just want to show the cartridges so that people are getting them. will have an idea how to use them. This is the best angle I could come up with. So you can see the LCD. I have the 16 bank by 32 K Ram cartridge in this TI 74. And uh, there's 8K built into the TI-74. And when these came out, the RAM cartridges that were available were 8K, whereas the ROMs were 32K. So this only knows to look for 8K. If we type in free zero, it's showing 7113 bytes, which is the 8K minus the operating system overhead. There are two ways that we can use this RAM cartridge. Uh, you'll notice if I list the program here, it says program zero. So we're, I have bank zero selected on here to which I've entered a program zero. Now I can save this entire 8K chunk of memory from the uh, device itself to the RAM cart by using call put one. Oops, if I can spell. And that's going to copy the, the entire 8K chunk of memory. It just does a, a memory copy directly over to the cartridge. Okay, and that's program zero. Now, if I turn this off and I select program one, which is going to be flipping up the third dip switch from the right hand side. Now, one thing you'll notice is that if I type in list, it still says program zero because we haven't messed with the 8K that's in the machine itself. So if I type in new, you can see that's not in there anymore. But if I type in call get one, and then list, it says program one. So I've loaded the program off of bank one on the RAM cart into the computer. And that's all fine and dandy. There's also, if you use a call get minus one, it does a swap between memory and the cartridge. So you can swap the programs back and forth that way. Now there is a third way, or a second way, I guess, to use the cartridge. I'm going to turn that off again. And I'm going to select bank two. Oops, wrong one. You can't see that. That should be there. Okay. It's hard trying to look in that hole through the viewfinder on the camera. So now if we type in call get one, again, I can't spell. I could edit out this fumbling me trying to type it in here on camera, but that's real life. You guys know that. Call get one list. So now we have the uh, program two, which is the second bank off the RAM cartridge. Now, the other method of using the RAM cartridge is to uh, tell the computer to join the two, the 8K here and the 8K here. And to do that, we do call add mem. Now, if we do free zero, you notice it says 15305. 
If you have a TI-74S, it knows how to look for all 32 case. You'll come up with about uh, 40K here. Uh, the problem with this is, is that you can't back up, you can't use the RAM cartridge as a RAM drive in this case. And if I switch in this configuration to another bank, you're not only going to mess up the bank that you're in that you've done the, ad, you know, the admin and, and join these two, but uh, you're going to mess up the bank that you switch to because all the pointers and everything that are set up right now in the computer won't work. Uh, you wind up messing up both banks that way. So if we type in new, uh, free zero. We still have that, and I think I haven't tried this beforehand. I think the command is new all. There we go. Now we're back to 7710, just the internal memory. Uh, new all also erases any subprograms. Those are the ones that you uh, use with the call and then the command name. It also erases all of those. So all those I had in here are gone. So just be warned, if you uh, extend the memory from computer to RAM cart, you need to do a new all before you try to switch to another bank or it'll goof things up. That's a limitation of the TI-74 itself. Okay, now I've got the 8 bank by 32K flash cart in here. This is version 1 or version 2. The 16 bank or version 3 boards. And I've got this set up to point to the Pascal ROM, which is right here. And to start that up, we do run Pascal. Yeah, that should have been a quote. Uh, it initializes it. It changed some pointers and stuff in the, the computer itself. So you'll pop up in Pascal mode the next time you turn it on. We can press clear. And from here we can program in Pascal. If I go off and back on, we're in Pascal mode. So the 16 bank cartridge works the same way. You just have eight free banks. Um, you need a programming adapter like I'm popping up here, which you slide the cartridge out like that. It plugs on here. You plug that into your uh, you know, TL-866, that type of programmer, or the, the new one, which is what, the M48 or T48 or something like that. Uh, I found that the T48 is more reliable for me. My 866 is a little flaky on flash parts. So um, it works most of the time, but not all the time. So now the TI-95. Here I have the 16 bank by 32K flash cart. Now if you look at the switches here, I have the middle two up for program selection. And that is the TI-95 statistics cart. Pop that into the 95 there. Now, I will mention that um, one thing you might find when you get these carts is your device won't immediately see it. There are a couple reasons for this. One is that the connectors in here it is a one millimeter circuit board with a hot air solder layer uh, connector finish. That can get oxidized. We've had problems with it on a few machines with those. Uh, as well as it was a real chore finding a connector that would work. Uh, you know, A, it has to be small. It has to be a 50 thousandths pitch. And it has to work with one millimeter board. And the only connector that we could find that met most of those qualifications was this one. And it was really for boards that were about one point three or four millimeters and above. So we've had to hand tweak uh, the contacts to make it work. They work after they're modified. It's just a little bit of a fiddly process. 
but since TI used a proprietary connector, what are you going to do? So I'll pop that in there. On the TI-95, I'll turn that on. Yeah, just the contrast so you can see it. Now on the TI-95, to run from a ROM, or the flash in this case, you press the Run button. And it shows you STA right here. That's the statistics cartridge. And it shows you the different ones that you can select. And what you're doing then is pulling these into uh, that, the, the memory on the machine, the RAM of the machine. Uh, when you're using the RAM cartridge on the TI-95, it sort of acts like a RAM drive. The TI-95 does have a rudimentary file system. You can partition the memory between the main unit and the cartridge uh, as you see fit. That may cause some problems with switching banks though. Uh, it even would if you just had an 8K RAM cart plugged in here and you had a partition just so it can cause problems doing it that way. So in that case, if you did anything fancy like that, you might want to back that all up before switching banks. Uh, the TI-95 can uh, see an 8K, or excuse me, it can see 16K of additional RAM. Uh, what it does is it does a RAM test and it actually writes that into the RAM itself as to uh, how much RAM is available. So you can go in, it's in the back of the manual. Uh, there's a way that somebody found that you poke a few locations in memory to tell it it has a 32K cartridge and not a 16K cartridge. So that does work. Uh, it's kind of confusing to do the first time you do it, um, but it's not too difficult. To me, keystroke programming is a bit cumbersome, even though I do like the 95. It's probably my favorite of this style device as far as keystroke programming, though I prefer a regular programming language. Okay, so we've seen the new uh, RAM and ROM carts available for uh, the TI-74 and TI-95. This is them here. Um, it's been an interesting project. It's like trying to stuff uh, five pounds of flour in a three pound sack. Uh, you can just do it if you hold your mouth just right. Uh, my friend who uh, designed these carts did an excellent job at doing that and um, you know, worked with me on getting things sized just right to work with an enclosure. So it's a lot of fun doing these projects with him. Uh, anyhow, uh, the link to the, the web page for the new cart is down in the description as well as uh, some information I put up on archive.org with all the original uh, images of all the original ROMs, the manuals for all the ROMs, things like that. I've tried to collect everything and put it in one place to make it easier for everyone. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks to everyone who helps support the Haybert channel through Patreon and other means. And here in a few weeks, uh, I'll be doing another video on refurbishing these units. Uh, I've got a stack of them here to go through, and the last one I was waiting for just arrived today. So, good time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, that was still running. I hope it was running before. Interesting. I might have been rambling for 10 minutes without the camera running. I guess we'll see when I edit this. <laughs>